All right, guys, today we're going to talk about cell division. And there's two major types of cell division. Today we'll focus on just one, and then in our next PowerPoint we'll talk about the other one. So when we talk about cell division, we have to think about why do cells need to divide? Okay, why can't they just grow bigger in size? That seems to make sense. Why don't they just keep growing and growing? And we have one big mega cell. Well, we know we're not like amoeba. We're not unicellular, and we can't function like that. We are made up of trillions of cells. So in order to understand why cells need to divide and why they can't just grow bigger and bigger and bigger, we have to understand the surface area to volume ratio. So if we look at this little cube right here, oops, sorry. If we look at this little cube right here as our one cell, okay, if we look at the surface area, you basically have to take the height, the width, times the number of sides, um, and the number of boxes. So if we look at this guy, our length times width, that's pretty simple, it's one times one, so we're at one. The number of sides on a cube remains the same, so that will also be one. And then over here, okay, we get our total surface area of six. Our volume, one times one times one. Okay, surface area to volume, you just divide and we get six. That's good, we want to have a high surface area to volume ratio. All that means is that surface area is going to be the cell membrane surrounding our cell. If we have a lot more cell membrane surrounding the cell compared to the volume, then we have lots of space for diffusion and facilitated diffusion and osmosis and active transport to happen. The cell can do a much better job of getting things across the membrane. If you had a very small surface area compared to your volume, you'd have a lot of things waiting up, waiting in line and building up inside the cell trying to get out. So if we look over here, we can see if we just made the cell get bigger, look what happens to that surface area to volume ratio. It gets significantly smaller and this will cause some mega problems for the cell. So in order to not have those problems, okay, nature has decided to make cells divide. And so we still get the same volume. You can see here it's still 5 times 5 times 5, we still get 125. However, if we look at the surface area, each one of these little cubes here has its own specific surface area. And you can go ahead and calculate the actual number of boxes. So right here we have five by five. So we have 25, 50, 75, 100, 125 boxes. So when you go to calculate this uh, surface area, total surface area, you do your length of each box, your height of each box, one, times your length of each box, one times the number of sides, which is six. So that will leave us with six. However, this time, instead of having one big massive box, we have 125 boxes. And if you go ahead and multiply that out, you get this mega number. Compared to this, it's pretty big. And when we divide it out, we're back to having a very large surface area. That means all these cells can work to make sure that they get things out, get things into the cell quick enough uh, for the cell to produce ATP and to make proteins and to do all those other good things cells do. So this just sums up what we just witnessed, what we just talked about. Okay, the two major reasons a cell needs to divide instead of growing in size is because if they decided to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you have that one little strand of DNA or two strands of DNA, depending on what organism you are, you are trying to control the entire cell, and that would be very, very difficult. We already know we get mutations with DNA in just one cell. Imagine if the cell was enormous. That would not be good. Um, the second reason, like I said before, is because the bigger the cell gets, the less efficient the cell membrane will be at getting things across and maintaining homeostasis. So instead of having one big cell trying to do all the work, okay, for the same amount of space, we get many cells, and there are significantly smaller cells doing the same amount of work, and they've just fixed those problems. Um, so again, keep in mind what's important is to have a large surface area to volume ratio. Not just a large surface area, not just a large volume, but a ratio, so that means we have to divide it. If it's small, that would be very bad, and we don't want small ratios. So this brings us to cell division. In order for things to grow, develop, reproduce, repair themselves, cells have to divide. So where did we first come up with this idea that cells divide? Well, we have to think back to an old friend of ours, Rudolf Virchow, that German physician who came up with the third part of our cell theory. Cells come from pre-existing cells. Remember, you guys can't forget that. You will always find questions on the EOC, on interim assessments, referencing Schleiden, Schwann, 
Raquel, Van Leyen Hook, Robert Hook, any of these guys are all about the cell theory. Right now we're focusing on this last part of the cell theory. So a quick overview. <laughs> we know why things need to survive, uh, we know why cells need to divide, repair growth and development, but there's two different types of cell division. And we talked about this way at the beginning of the year. Um, remember we have asexual and sexual reproduction. This is how things reproduce. So sexual reproduction is actually gonna involve two different parent cells. And these are what we call our gametes, and we've talked about these a while ago, but our gametes have half the number of chromosomes of all our other cells because eventually they're gonna to come together to make that good little thing we call a zygote. So sexual reproduction is going to require two parent cells. Those two parent cells will come together, combine their DNA, and we're gonna get genetically different offspring. Now this whole process does not use what we're gonna talk about today, mitosis. It does in some parts, but that whole fertilization part, it all starts off by a process called meiosis. More on that later. The other type of reproduction that actually involves using mitosis would be asexual reproduction. This produces genetically identical offspring. Now, organisms such as bacteria, amoeba, archaea bacteria, they can reproduce asexually. If you remember, we talked about binary fission way back in the day. Uh, let's go ahead and get this up there. Like we are saying, organisms that reproduce asexually do use mitosis. And one of those ways of reproducing asexually is via binary fission, where we start off with one little bacteria cell that has a nice plasmid here, and the next thing that's gonna happen is that plasmid's gonna replicate itself within that bacterial cell, so now we have two plasmids, and then slowly that one bacterial cell will begin to divide into two genetically identical bacteria cells, each with the same exact plasmid. Um, and that's what we refer to, you can remember, as binary fission. And that's an example of asexual reproduction, okay? So now, before we dive into exactly how all this happens, you do need to understand um, a little bit of terminology, especially when we're talking about chromosomes. When we're talking about chromosomes, okay, we use, we throw that term a lot, but it has a couple of different meanings in a couple of different contexts. So in order to understand what a chromosome is, we need to know what DNA is. A chromosome is a molecule DNA. And we have exactly 46 molecules of DNA in every single one of our cells, except for our gametes. Those cells only have 23 molecules of DNA. So when we talk about chromosomes, what we're actually talking about is molecules of DNA. When we see our chromosomes all spread out in a big tangled mess in our nucleus, when a cell is not dividing, we call it chromatin. Chromatin is, all, is still DNA, it is still uh, chromosomes, except spread out in a big mess, and again, in non-dividing cells, that's why it's highlighted there, so you can understand we see chromatin in non-dividing cells. The only time we see this chromatin come together nice and neat and condensed is in the form of chromosomes, and we only can see chromosomes when a cell begins to actually divide its nucleus. And so we're gonna get into some terms here. You see we have um, chromosomes, and then we have what we call sister chromatids, and we have centromeres. So in order to understand what a chromosome is, if we're looking at this here, and we have a cell, and in this cell we have a DNA. And let's say this cell got three pieces of DNA from its dad, and then let's say the cell got three pieces of DNA from its mom. Okay, so if we're looking at this cell right now, how many total DNA molecules does this cell have? Okay, and what you should get is six. It has six total DNA molecules. So then we say it has six chromosomes, and that's how we refer to those DNA molecules. Now remember, if this cell is non-dividing, they're gonna be a big tangled mess, but right now we're just trying to visualize them a little bit better. So this is in a non-dividing cell. Um, since this cell has a total of six chromosomes, three from dad, here's one from dad, two from dad, three from dad, and here's one from mom, another one from mom, Oops, this is number two from mom, and number three from mom, okay? We actually have a total of six chromosomes or Another way to say it is three pairs. Now since this would be a normal body cell, then 
then the cell we would refer to as a somatic cell. These are your normal cells. Okay, and these cells always have two sets of chromosomes. Two sets of every chromosome. And we say two sets of every chromosome, what we really mean is, okay, they got one from mom, one from dad, one from mom, one from dad, one from mom, one from dad. There's a fancy way of saying this, and the fancy way of saying this is this cell is diploid. Okay, and we represent it by 2N. That's how we represent those somatic cells that have two sets of chromosomes. You need to know that word. Okay, so if this cell is diploid, it has two sets of chromosomes. That means 2N is going to equal how many total chromosomes? Six. So the diploid number of this cell is six. If we think about humans, humans have 46 total chromosomes. That means they got 23 from mom and they got 23 from dad. So that means we are also, okay, sexually reproducing organisms and therefore our diploid number would be 46. That's our diploid number for humans. So that's our diploid number. Now there's another word that you do need to know and that other word you need to know is haploid. So we'll go ahead and put diploid up here. So diploid was 2N. All that meant was two sets of our chromosomes. And those are in all of our body cells. Now, if we only have one set of chromosomes, we say it's N. And we refer to that as haploid. Haploid is only one set of chromosomes. What kind of cells would have one set of chromosomes? You guessed it, your gametes. And those are our reproductive cells. Those are the only cells with one set. Okay, only cells with one set, and so they are gonna be made by a whole nother process because they're not identical to the cells they came from. And we'll get to that later, but it's important for you to know these two terms. Make sure, okay, you understand the ways they can be represented either by N or 2N, okay? The diploid number of humans is 46, the haploid number of humans is 23. So here's our cell. We'll go ahead and do, we said we had three. So we had one chromosome from mom, one chromosome one from mom, okay, a chromosome two, we'll make it nice and long from mom, and then we had a short little, let's say this is a little chromosome three from mom. And dad gave us the same exact ones because we got a set from each. So this is one from dad, this is one from, uh, number two from mom, or from dad, and this is number three from dad as well. So you see how they're exactly identical. Now what's important about this is if you remember, what's okay, if, if this chromosome, remember this chromosome is really a big squiggly piece of DNA. And in DNA, every section of DNA that okay, codes for a specific protein, many times is expressed as a trait. And we call that a gene. So we have lots of genes Okay, on each chromosome. So, for example, let's say your mom gave you the gene for brown eyes, so we'll put a big B there, and your dad gave the, you the gene for blue eyes, and we put the little B there. So on chromosome number one, we're carrying the gene for eye color. Your mom gave you one version of it, your dad gave you another version of it. Those versions of genes, if you remember, are called alleles. So this should all be a review. Now remember, eye color really isn't that simple. It's a lot more complicated than that. But for the sake of this example, we'll go ahead and use eye color. So when we look at this cell, this would be okay, a normal somatic cell, and it is not dividing. Now, each of these would be considered a chromosome. Okay, this is a chromosome, this is a chromosome, this is a chromosome, chromosome, chromosome. So we have six chromosomes. That means our diploid number, or 2N, equals six. Now, another way we refer to these chromosomes, and here's another new term that you need to know, is because you got a chromosome, one from mom and one from dad, together they're referred to as homologous chromosomes. And if we go back and think about our prefixes, homo means the same, 
So therefore, okay, these are chromosomes that carry the same genes, but just different versions of those same genes. So that's why we call them homologous chromosomes. Now what happens when a cell goes to divide, okay, when the cell goes to divide, it's, in the end we want to get two cells that look exactly the same. So that means what we really want is to have two cells that have the same exact chromosome one, this is a little bit longer, chromosome two from mom, and a chromosome three from mom, and a chromosome one from dad. We want to get a one from, uh, two, two from dad, and a three from dad. So we want to get these cells to look exactly the same. And so there's going to have to be a way we do this. And in order to get this number exactly the same, to get these same exact numbers of chromosomes, we're missing an in-between step over here. So there's something that has to happen to get over here. In order to do that, we're going to have to go ahead and, and I'll draw a big cell here so we can see what's going to happen. Make it too big. So what we're going to see here is dad's chromosome number one is going to go ahead and replicate. So now we have two chromosomes number one from dad. And dad's chromosome number two, the really, really long squirrely one, is going to replicate. So now we have two chromosome number twos from dad. And our little teeny short one over here, the chromosome number three from dad, that one's going to replicate too as well. So now we have two chromosome threes from dad. Now this is the same thing happens with moms. Originally we had one from mom, well now the cell knows it's going to have to get a copy in each new cell, so that one replicates. So now we have two chromosome number ones from mom, same thing with chromosome number two. It will replicate, so you have two chromosome number twos from uh, mom, and then for chromosome number three, same thing. Number three replicates, and we end up with okay, two chromosome number threes from mom as well. So when we look at this, okay, remember again, now this is where we backtrack, okay, we called each of these individually, this was a chromosome, and this was a chromosome. And together we called them a we called them a homologous pair of chromosomes. Now when we look over here, we still consider, even though it replicated itself, that chromosome number one from mom is still chromosome number one from mom, even though now there's two copies of it. So when you see it written like this as a little, and it's chromosome one, same exact one from mom, that's what we call, still considered a chromosome, but now we're going to call each of these, since they're still together, since the original is attached to its twin, we refer to each individual one as a sister chromatid. As long as they're together and they're joined in this little region called a centromere, they're going to be considered sister chromatids. Okay, but still remember, how many chromosomes do we really have? If this was a chromosome, that means this is also a chromosome. So now, in this picture, chromosome is referring to two chromosomes in one pair. This is where it gets really confusing. These two are also considered a chromosome. So this is chromosome number one from dad, and it's copy. So we refer to each of those as chromatids. Together, we still call this, because they're both chromosome ones from mom and dad, we refer to it as a homologous pair of chromosomes. So you can see how up here we said chromosome, chromosome, homologous pair of chromosomes. We're saying the same thing here. We just made an extra copy. We also, together, all four of them, 
we're just trying to generalize all four, we'll call it a tetrad, and that's going to be important in mitosis. Since we have four, it's tetrad. If you've ever played Tetris, Tetris is where we have the blocks falling down, and it's always four blocks that are coming down in different arrangements. If you haven't played in a while, go and play, and you'll see everything, even those weird-shaped L1s or those weird-shaped Z-looking ones. I'll have four blocks, so that's why it's called Tetris. This has four total chromosomes, so we call it a tetrat. So hopefully this clears it up a little bit so you can understand how we go from here to having two identical cells. We know these sister chromatids are not going to stay together. We're actually going to split them up amongst the two new cells. But we have a lot of new terms that you need to know. I hope this helped you understand a little bit better. This over here by itself is a chromosome, but we also call these two over here a chromosome and when we're referring to it like this we say there's two chrom sister chromatids in this chromosome okay if you're still confused rewatch the video from the beginning all the drawings hopefully that helps out